connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose, want to make an impact in the kingdom, ready to tap into your future. Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell, www.houseofreconciliation.org. <laughs> now you want to say go? Yeah, okay. Good morning and welcome in to another edition of Success of Living. I'm... Um, Reggie Campbell, happy to have you. Good morning to the Greenwood campus and as well as to the Greenville campus and, of course, to our virtual campus and to all those that are joining us across the uh, nation and across the world. want to uh, thank South Africa, Norway, also Ghana, and also Nigeria for being a part of the ministry and to watch the program and those that are local in Easley, South Carolina, also Greenville, and Malton, Simpsonville, and the wonderful town of Powdersville and Fountain Inn. We thank you this morning for joining us. Uh, we're going to continue our journey. Uh, Proverbs 25 and 28 is our base. It talks about a person without self-control. It's like a city with broken down walls. And we know that this is a time of Lent for some. This is a time of a variety of things that people are doing to recognize and to respect and to try to understand even more so of the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So a couple of things that I'm doing is starting to share with us that there is another scripture in the Bible that talks about anyone that comes after me, let him take up his cross. So we've been talking and we've been trying to work on the various levels and stages that we have to go to to be able to not only be earthly conditioned but also spiritually conditioned to be able to pass the challenges. I don't know if it's up yet, but there is a slide, and it talks about five levels. Every next level of your life will demand a different you. Every level. It's almost, and I don't know them correctly, I think there's an infant, then it becomes a toddler, and then what it becomes after that? A child, after a child, a preteen, then a teenager, then a young adult, and then an adult. So there's multiple stages in our lives, but somehow we don't see and we don't think that there are multiple stages in our spiritual growth. And the reason I say this, and a lot of people go back to a phrase that I always say, you can't address everything with your feelings and emotions. And I'm going to dig a little deeper in that. You have to address things with the knowledge, the experience that turns into wisdom. Each one of us, including myself, must learn how to seek out spiritual growth, spiritual insight, Spiritual foresight, spiritual growth. Spiritual growth, and it goes back to the term of the Holy Spirit. It should be the barometer. It should be the, it should be the centerpiece of our life. You have two choices. You can either go with your feelings and emotion, or you can look at this and understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and darkness and wickedness. We're in high places. If you're supposed to elevate to the next level in your life, if we don't clip our nails, we we'll have a hangnail. And so we're supposed to be maybe at a level two in our life, but because of what we dealt with and how we think and how we feel, we're negative 85. So we don't see the opportunity. Every challenge that comes to you and I is not a challenge that we should be defensive about. And so what happens is when we don't give God our attention, then God has to put certain things in our path 
in order to refocus us and bring us into focus. So we look at it this, this way. We just can't keep seeing the moment through a broken presence. What are you saying? If I am upset, disappointed, angry, fearful, frightened today, do we not know that everything that we address will be from that one perception. If you, if you get up this morning, many of you sitting in your pajamas, many of you are on your way to your own service and you're chiming in. Whatever happened this morning, whatever happened last night, whatever happened yesterday evening, if you have gotten up with that today, then you know I are ready for today. Because we're going to see everything and we're going to respond to everybody and everything with what happened. Because what has happened is the enemy has set our temperament. And we have allowed the enemy to set our temperament. So when someone comes along, even though it's not a problem or it's not an issue, we mad about it. When it could be someone coming to teach, to share, to inform, to instruct, to give. But we met them with irons of fire and not the life of Christ. You, you ever tried to speak to someone and they had an attitude and all you said was hi and they mad because you didn't say hello? They said bye, you said okay. They mad because you didn't say, it's not you. There's something else that's going on. We can't enjoy the day, and I just had this conversation, holding grudges against yesterday or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Because if we keep operating out of that broken presence, we can never understand the lessons that we are to learn to move on. And what it does is it creates uh, an invisible wilderness. Uh, I think those that are pet lovers, many of them uh, would prefer for their pet to be free. And so they create this thing called an invisible fence. And in many of our lives, we've created an invisible fence. So we can see opportunity. We can see the promised land. We can see others, but we can't see ourselves. And we can encourage them because we've built an invisible wall of what was, so we've never lived in our presence. See, our past is full, our future is waiting, and our present is empty. Because all the things that you and I can accumulate, it doesn't create self-worth. Self-worth worth is built upon how you view and see yourself. Not how we cover and represent ourselves. So here's the thing. Those kind of thoughts and behavior, they just keep the walls weak. Because remember, we're talking about Proverbs 25 and 28 in the New Living Translation. It says a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. And anything that is weak now is easy to overtake. So when I say it just keeps the walls weak, why? Most people are living under constant pressure. But what do you mean? He or she or they are just trying to hold it together. And it's in that is where the term struggle. The struggle is weird, real. Self-denial, self-gratification. We have a way of mentally blocking out as well as spiritually blocking out because if you failed, you fail for a reason. You didn't fail so many times because you were wrong and you were being chastised because that's how we see it. Failing is going back to school to learn how to approach it differently. 
You didn't fail if you learned from it. You didn't fail. And, and so this is why I say you have to take the feelings and the emotions and the anxiety and the frustration out of it because you're missing the lesson. You're missing what you're supposed to learn. You're missing what you were supposed to gather. You're missing how you were supposed to see it. You're missing the turn that you were supposed to have in life. You're missing that because you're caught up in what's behind you. And you're not focused on what's in front of you. So it goes this way. It just keeps the wall weak. The pressure of weak walls. What does that mean? I'm trying to hold it together, but yet I'm not moving. There are some things you can't hold up. You have to just let it go. There are some things that you and I would never understand. And the enemy uses the greatest tool, deception and perception. And many times people create the wrong perception about themselves. Because they only see themselves through the eyes of struggle, poverty, failure, and race. So then that becomes the excuse for me to continue to be dysfunctional. Because see, here's the thing. If I don't have any expectations of me, then you shouldn't have any expectations of me. And the problem is with God is he didn't put you here without any expectations. It's easy to live under the roof of failure and I can and I want and I should and I would have and I could have rather than to embrace the opportunity that there is an expected end. Most people are employed and when they go to work or when they do an assignment, they expect to get paid. Why wouldn't God expect the best out of you? So now do you want to continue, would you want a family member, a brother, or a sister, or a friend, or associate, or acquaintance to always come to you broken? Every time you see him, every time you see her, every time you see them, every time you see these family members, they have their hands out. Help me. I need. I know I asked you the last time, but could you, would you, if you help me this time, I won't be back. How many times have you heard that? So how, so reverse it. How do you think God sees you and I? When he's given us 39 books of the Old Testament, 27 books of the New Testament. And put blood on his word. Put blood on his word. And we have no faith. No commitment. But a standing line for a blessing. How? See, because we have commercialized the resurrection of Jesus Christ so much. And we go through it and, oh, poor Jesus, poor Jesus, oh, my God, poor Jesus. See, we forgot the narrative that he died for the penalty of sin. And we are responsible for the acts of sin. And he said in the Old Testament, he said, I want you to understand something. I'm a jealous God. What has your attention over God. What's your commitment to him, them, they, Ulams, and my friends over God? We won't even come and worship, in service worship. Find every excuse in the world. I can't go today. But let it be a party. Let it be we think we're going to get the lottery tickets. 
We'll check in on a lottery ticket more than we'll read a Bible verse a day. The pressure of weak walls, here is what should do, should force one to grow and become disciplined. See what's missing in most people's lives are a set of disciplines. What's that, what does that mean? Things I will accept and things I will reject. The problem with most of us is we're trying to accept everything. Because we don't want to hurt. Come on, talk to me. We don't want to hurt nobody's feelings because we don't want our feelings. So we just going to lie to everybody. Anybody want to go with me now? We've just been together a few minutes. Anybody want to go now? We can stay up all night to watch A, B, or C and go to sleep five minutes in church. This, this is what I get. I, you know, I, I want us to come back to church, but y'all need to go to bed because this is what I got. And this is the ugly thing right here. Who's snoring? It's you, boo-boo. It's you. I, I, I'm not snoring. You hate to record people in church. I think that's sometimes why we have a lot of noise and do 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 do. You know, it, uh, 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 I guess it's a simulation. We think a stimulation and oh, 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 oh. But as soon as we sit down, so then we'll say, "I need some coffee." Can I go there? Can I go there? We'll say we need some coffee and go pay eight, nine, ten dollars for coffee and then put a dollar or fifty cent in the offering. I want your coffee money. I want you, I want what you give to the convenience store. Two for six. Three for nine. Three for twelve. A six pack for twelve ninety nine. I want you to pay. I want you to pay. Like you pay at the convenience store. You don't argue with the pump. You just put the gas in. So I want you when it comes to giving so we can serve ministry. Because I talked to some people on yesterday and I shared with them. I said, Here, here's the problem. Church is where we go worship. And so for people who have an issue with money, let me help you out. Because the only reason you have an issue with money, you either got to be a thief or you cheat. Uh, there's a third when you're broke, right? All right, you don't mind receiving, but you have a problem with sowing. And I know there's a lot. I can't speak to who's out there and what he or she is doing. I'm saying, if you go back and read the Minor Prophets, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Haggai, read those Minor Prophets. They're not long chapters. God said to them, you've built your houses. And the temple of God, just like you want your house to be nice and you want new rims and you want the best sound system. Uh, I'm speaking to my millennium group because, you know, they'll go and spend $5,000 on some rims and the car ain't worth but 18, the car ain't worth but 900, but, you know, and then they'll put an $8,000 paint job on it. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You up. Yes, yes. Females do it too. And then you put your favorite team and your on your car and you done spent $22,000 on a $600 car. And you mad and got a problem with giving God five dollars. <laughs> but you go right on to the convenience store and get three for nine. And you trust the people at the convenience store to tell you that it's a sale. But you can't trust God to say it's a seed. You can trust the people at the convenience store and say that it's a sale. I got to get that. Take out a sale. Take out a sale every day. But you can't trust God with a seed. And so I don't care what people say about me when it comes to money. Because this shirt that I have on, this sweater, 
is older than most of y'all watching this program. This is over 30 some years old, so I ain't, let me say a real country, because I'm in the South. I ain't got your money, and I ain't stealing your money. I pulled this out this morning. I said, you know, I think I got this in the 80s. I'm just glad I can fit it. I don't want to be like the man on the commercial. Somebody, I still got my, I still got my uh, high school clothes. Mm, I don't want my high school clothes. But I'm just saying, the pressure of wheat walls should force one to grow and become disciplined. Now, here was the subject for today. You can fail. I want everybody to say that with me. So you can fail. You can fail. You can fail. You can fail. You know, I, I, have, I have people in my family. I, I have two lineages in my family. One, they can't make a B. You know, I got that group. They have to have an A and an A+. Plus. I, I'm, I'm from the family on the other side of the tracks that I'm happy if I get a D-. minus. I'm, I'm, as long as I pass, I... I, I still get to walk in the line. I, I'm walking in the line with the people with the A. Yeah, they may be ahead of me, but I'm, I'm still on the bus. So I, I'll take the D minus. I'll take the D plus. I like to have a C minus because then you can say, well, I got a C. But sometimes your knowledge in certain things are not that high. C come on, you can't be good at everything. You do? I work for the D. I'm not saying it's a standard, but that was my best at that time. I, that was my best. See, y'all y'all missed the point. Y'all, they stuck on my D. That was my best at that time. Yes, I would love to have an A, but if I got an A, they think I cheated and stole somebody's paper. Why is that critical? <clears throat> when God, you get to a point in God, when God starts looking at your history, where do you think credit comes from? God looks at your history. So if I'm a below average or average student, and I know, you know, I have some, and I'm glad to have some smart people in my family because I look over and say, how do you spell cat? And they're like, ha, papa, C-A-T. Okay, because I spell it T-A-C. I'm not mad as long as I get it right. Could be. Back then when I came along, they wasn't checking babies. <laughs> when I came along, they just, it's a boy. It's a girl. And you go home with him. You, you didn't know what was wrong with the child. He, you didn't know what was wrong with him. Ah, <laughs> oh, Leroy, he a little different. Little Reggie, he a little different. Y'all laughing now because y'all got behavior classes. Y'all got all this stuff. When they had people like me, you just went home. You didn't get no such thing as a baby room. <laughs> you didn't have no painted baby room. You just had a room. You was happy that you, you didn't even know you was happy, but you're like, hee, 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 just like, hey, hey. Now they, they move furniture and buy furniture for babies. I came along, you slept wherever they put you. I'm going to give you a couple of things. You can fail. Everybody said it with me. You can fail. You can fail. But you got to try. And if you don't try, you don't learn the lesson. Don't look at you fail. Learn what you missed and correct it. That's the only thing that you should be focused on. It shouldn't move you. I'm like, how do you be 12 and have an issue? How do you be 14 and tired? And sleepy. See, I understand now why parents will put, <laughs> this is a new generation. I understood back in the day. I didn't understand back in the day why parents would put us in the front of them. Because we fall asleep. You know, we kids, we didn't play hard. But now, the, the, the parents are asleep and the kids are asleep. I just, I, just, I, I, I just don't know where we're at now, you know. But, all right, here's number one. <clears throat> you can fail. Say, say I, it's okay to fail. But you got to try. You got to try to figure out what went wrong. You can't figure out what went wrong if you're using all your energy on you failed. Because there's another level. 
if, if, and I and go, go back to what I said earlier, if you're angry about yesterday, if you're holding a grudge, you're still mad, you, you still feel rejected and denied, you see everything in your life that way. And most negative people hate negative people, but most negative people associate with negative people. Number one, here is something I don't think you realize. You not only fail to discover your innate inheritance. When you don't try, you fail to discover because what you forget is that you're under development. So A makes you think you're a finished product. Most people can pass basic math. But then there's another level of math called fractions, calculus, trigonometry, algebra. You get to algebra before you get to them. Each one sets up you and give you the base for the other one. Am I right? Yes. So my question is, if you are having a problem with step one, and if you don't learn step one, how can you take the sum of the equations and the root and the base Come on, somebody in finances with me. <laughs> yeah, come on, somebody in finance. I got about three people in finances with me because I know one of them knows it. One of them see other two people work there. Wait, what, what you doing? I'm good in math. I's an engineer. Ooh, I don't remember that one. I don't remember, I don't remember, now I don't remember, I don't remember, why are you over there? If you can't help me, get out of the way. Well, I'm just trying to see if y'all going to get it right. How you know if you don't even understand what makes up the formula? That's why each step in your life is important. You lose the formula because you're mad about failing or succeeding, learn the formula, and the formula will stop failure. But why? Ask me why. why. It's easy to pass what you know. <laughs> oh, oh, now, what, a minute ago, and I call me out, don't talk about me, I don't say this about me, and then that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. Number two. When you don't try, you also hinder yourself from receiving your spiritual birthright to the fullest. God has never tried to half save, half develop, half teach, half deliver anybody. If God is in it, he's in it. To the end. God doesn't put you on the third floor when you have the capabilities of being on the fifth floor. It is the mindset. Come on, grasshopper. We see ourselves because we walked into a place that was bigger than us and it blew our mind. So I see myself as a. Yes. But you hinder yourself. Here's the other thing. Because of failure, we must understand that one heirs your future children. You're setting the template right now. Your children will measure their life off of the template you set. Let me look at the camera when I say that. Regardless of what you're doing, male, female, dad, even if they're not your kids and, and you love them, you are their template. And if you accept less, then they think less is to be accepted. Because you don't want to address issues. I just had a real conversation with my oldest daughter. And I didn't give her daddy's opinion. I said, in the eyes of God. Not what I want. Not what I agree with. Not what I disagree with. You have to do it because it's from him whom all blessings flow. And I can negate my blessing 
with my attitude. I can negate my purpose. So, so, so here's the thing. Because of failure, you don't understand your children are watching you when you're having a tantrum. And what you're saying to your children is, God, mom can have a tantrum and it's okay. Dad can have a tantrum and it's okay. And so then when they get out in public and go to school and have to deal with law enforcement and deal with authority, they're going to like, well, mama cussed them out. <laughs> Need to find my, uh, God, what is it? Uh, not Tupac. Uh, DMX music. See, you, you want to ride with all this profane music in the car and wonder why your children can't stay in school. And you teaching them how to. So instead of a test, they. And you wonder why. And then you say they're not dumb. They're not dumb, but they're not prepared either. <laughs> let, me, let me help somebody. <laughs> you want to be good? Do what most people don't do. Beat them in the books. Because most people can run their mouth, but when you, when you bring out pencil and paper, these phones have made us weak. Tablets have made us weak because we used to type it. But when you have to go back to writing, <laughs> physically writing, you hear the tap that I, people taking notes. And, and let me say this to you before I forget because, you know, sometimes I forget stuff. I want you to take at least five things that I've taught you. And I want you to individually post them. And you can post them on the house. But I want you to post them and say, this is the ministry I go to. Did you hear something like this today? I want you to post it and hashtag it. Hashtag the ministry. In it. Because see, here's the thing. And I want you to really get this. Our priorities are not lined up with our inheritance. Our, pro our priorities must Line up with our purpose and destiny. What does that have to do with how I feel? How I feel is overwritten by what am I supposed to learn and what am I supposed to accomplish? Well, I can't go anywhere without my feelings. That's why you ain't going anywhere right now. Uh, and so then you wake up and every now and then about maybe two or three times a year you wake up in life and you're like where am I and you'll see one of your friends at another level you're like look at her look at her look at her Reggie you spin and wanted around confusion was a priority Misinformation always lead to misdirection. Number four, our priorities must line up with our purpose and our destiny. So for those of you that are watching, those of you that will be watching later, what's your purpose and what's your destiny? Because that's where you'll find your identity. I'm going to give you this one and we're going to close. Can you make the right decision in the critical moment to sustain the strengths of your wall? What are you saying? If I and you continue to be struggling with holding the walls, then we can't move on. That's where the time went. Sometimes we're trying to fix an imperfect thing. Sometimes we're trying to fix an imperfect person. And maybe that's a level five for them. But it's not a level five for you. So the principles... The integrity of which you do the Lord's work and the biddings and the gifts that God has given you. People say, well, you know, it's always church. Well, no. God wants you to succeed. 
you cannot have a blessed church unless you have blessed people. And God wants his people to be blessed. The problem is many people of God don't have discipline with the blessings that they receive from God. Because the blessings take their attention off of God. So sometime your blessing is bigger than your spiritual comprehension. So then you get off task because now you're full of you. So God looks back at you and I and says, man, you can't handle that. You can't handle a new car. You can't handle a promotion. You can't handle a mid-level promotion. You can't handle criticism. You can't handle persecution. You can't handle rejection. Let me say this before I forget. Now, I told you all about posting something, right? Okay. But what I think I want <clears throat> for Easter Sunday, it's not so much of the hooping and hollering. It's to have someone build a cross. This is why I wish some people would have never left the ministry, uh, but they did. They, that was their choice because now I would, like, I would love to have had someone in theater to carry out a part. But what I want to do is have a cross. It doesn't have to be a wooden cross. Well, who's going to carry it? Because, uh, you know, muscles ain't muscles like they used to be. But I want to put it up, and I want you, the audience, to join me either here or in Greenwood. And I want to know what are you going to pin to the cross? And when you walk away from that cross, you plan to let that thing die in your life. You, you want to hang what has been holding you up on that cross. And that is a testament that if I have low self-esteem, if I am addicted to poverty, I'm coming that day to say, Lord, I want to bury this. I've identified it. And I want to be, you don't have to put your name on it, but just when you come, you come praying and you just say, when I, because I want to rise. I, I, rising is just not Easter Sunday. Because Jesus been got up. Fact is that he's been up for over 2,000 years. But you know, we still, <laughs> we got to go crucify Jesus. So when do I crucify the things that's holding me back? When? And it could be more than one thing. Because throughout the teaching, I would just love to see people say, Lord, I want to overcome this. I have an addiction. And I'm going to put this addiction and I'm going to pin it on the cross. There'll be a little thing. You can write it out and you may go sit down and think of something else. Because it isn't about, oh, Jesus, who can't tell the Easter story? Everyone in here probably can tell the Easter story. But what God wants to do is to see you and I be a living testimony. So he wants your life and my life to tell the story of how he made a difference in us. God bless you. I will see you all in Greenwood shortly.